Hi boys and girls, welcome to another Sunday. My name is Grace and I'm your service leader. So let's close our eyes and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you, Lord. We thank you for this day. We thank you for the gift of life and we appreciate you for everything and may you lead us in our Sunday school and be with us forever. Amen. So kids, we are going to have the dance Yay! and then come back. Have Yay! fun. kids i hope you enjoyed the dance you know it's good to dance for the lord and have fun so let's go to our lesson and the one taking us through the lesson is pastor henry let's sit and listen and learn something have fun good morning and welcome for another sunday school uh my name is pastor henry and remember the month of August, we were dealing with the Elijah, and we looked at the life of Elijah. And finally, last Sunday, what we saw was Elijah being taken by a whirlwind to go to heaven. And remember, during that time, he was with another man. His name was Elisha. Did I pronounce it well? Yes, Elisha, not Elijah. The first one was Elijah. Now we are talking about Elisha. And so Elisha became a disciple of Elijah just a few uh, months or a few days before he was taken. And we see him uh, going with him and following him until when the chariots of fire came and took out Elijah and went with him. And Elisha remained behind. And he took over the mantle and became the prophet. And so today we are looking at this prophet of God uh, with a widow called the Shunammite widow. This woman had a problem. The husband was one of the prophets. And before he died, he had accumulated some debts. And so when he died, he left the family in debt. And after some few days or some few months, the owners of the debts came and told him, you know what, your husband died and died with my debts, and have come to collect. This woman was worried. Now what do I do? I do not have anything. He did not even leave for us anything. What do I do? And the man told him, if you don't have anything, or if you don't have the money to pay me back, then I'm going to take your two sons to become my slaves, to serve me until the day when you'll be able to get the money. So this widow got worried. She wondered, now what do we do? Or what do I do? Already the husband has died. And this man is again threatening to take his two sons away with him. He was so devastated. And he, she thought and thought on what to do. And a thought came into her mind that, oh, there is a man of God. His name is Elisha. 
I will run to this man of God to see if he's, he will be able to help us. After all, he was uh, the, 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 the leader of the prophets. And so he must have a solution. And so this lady walked and went to where Elisha was. And when she found Elisha, she went and probably knelt down or probably uh, stood humbly and told Elisha, Oh, my husband died. And he died with a debt. I don't know what to do. The owner of the debt has come. And he wants to take my children, my two sons, to go and be with him. What will become of me? I'll remain alone. I'm already a widow. And then my two sons are to be taken away. What do I do, man of God? And Elisha told, uh, told her, don't worry. What is it that you have in the house? And the woman said, hmm. I don't have much. Probably I just have a jar of oil. But what can a jar of oil do? And Elisha told her, go back to your house, get your children, go to your neighborhood, and borrow all vessels that you can get, all the jars that you can get. Go around and make sure you have borrowed as many as possible. And so this woman went, of course, somehow maybe disappointed, not knowing what to do. What if it doesn't work? What if I go and whatever I've been told to do doesn't work? But Elisha assured her that just go and after you have collected all the vessels, close yourself with the children in the house and start pouring the oil that you have from the jar into these jars that you'll have collected from the neighbors. And so the woman walked, walked and went back and told the sons, hey, come here, go to our neighbors, ask them to give you all the vessels that are there, the vessels that are available. And so the children went to every house in the village and asked for all the vessels. And they brought in so many of the vessels. And after that, she even asked, do we have more? And they said, no, mama, we have asked from all our neighbors. There are no more remaining. And so they went into the house and they closed the door and they started pouring the oil that had remained into these vessels. And they poured in the first one and it became full. And they went to the second one. It became full. And to the third and to the fourth and to the fifth until the end. And she even asked, don't we have any more? And they said, no. They are over. And with the moment they poured in the last jar, the oil stopped pouring. Ha! Ah, they were so excited. The whole house was filled with oil in the jars. And so they were so excited and they ran to the man of God, Elisha, and told him what had happened. And Elisha told the widow, just go back and sell the oil and pay the debt, and whatever remains, that will be for your upkeep. And so they went back home. They looked for the uh, person that they owed the money. And after selling all the oil, they paid off all the debts. And so they remained without any debts. And whatever remained, they used for their own. You know what, children? Our God is a big God. Is a powerful God. He's a God who is able to do even much more than we can even ask. Imagine this lady, what did she do? She went to the right person. She looked for the prophet of God. And you know what, children? Sometimes we go through troubles. We go through some hard situations. And we have nowhere to turn to. We go to our fathers, to our mothers, to our parents or even to our relatives, and they're not able to help us. And you know what? We can run to God. We can go to God. He hears our prayer. How do we run to God? Through prayer. And so this widow ran to the man of God. We can also run to God when we are in need. The other thing that we learn from this lesson is that God has given us different talents. And you know we can use these talents to help the community or to help our friends and the people in our neighborhood. 
Remember, they went to the servant of God, Elisha. And Elisha used the talent that he had because he was a preacher, he was a prophet. His calling was to pray for the sick. His calling was to, to do miracles. And when she went to, to him, they received their miracle. And so today, children, we have a God that we can run to. We have a God that we can trust. We have a God that can give us the hope. It doesn't matter how hard the situation looks like. It doesn't matter whether it's sickness, whether it's troubles. Maybe we have troubles in, uh, with our friends. Maybe some of them want to beat us up. You know what? We can run to Jesus. He's able to protect us. He's able to guide us. And he's able also to provide for all our needs. And this week, I want us to know that our God is a mighty God. That when we run to him, he is faithful and he will do that which we have asked him to do. Remember this story is coming from the book of 2 Kings chapter 4 verse 1 to 7. So after the end of this day, ask your mommy, ask your daddy to help you to read 2 Kings chapter 4 verse 1 to 7. And we will find that story there. It's an exciting story and I believe that it will uh, encourage you and it will build your faith. At this particular time, I want us to pray. At home, do you have anything that you want us to pray for? I can see you up there uh, at home. Whatever you want us to pray for, just lift up your hand and close your eyes and then we pray. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for every boy and for every girl. We thank you because you love us so much and that you care for us. And we thank you because when we are in need, we can run to you and you can meet with our needs. Just like this widow ran to Elisha, the servant of God, and their needs were met. Lord, we are coming to you this morning with all our needs, be it financial, be it sickness. Lord, we are coming before you for healing and for your miracles in our lives. Even as we continue trusting in you for this uh, coronavirus, we pray that, Lord, you will protect us and you will protect even our friends and our relatives that they will not be victims of this uh, pandemic. We worship you and we honor you. In Jesus' name do we pray. Amen. I hope you've made that prayer. And once we pray, we believe that God does a miracle. And our memory verse for this uh, week is coming from the book of Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. And this is what it says. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. That is our memory verse. Make sure you memorize because come next Sunday, I will ask you to memorize. Otherwise, God bless you and have a beautiful week. And remember to keep safe, to sanitize, and don't forget to wear your mask as you go to play with your friends. And also, even as, you, uh, uh, as we finish, tell your mommy, tell your daddy to download for you the crafts that are there for coloring and also for filling the blank spaces. And God will bless us. Until next Sunday, see you. Bye-bye. And God bless you. So children, that's all we had for this Sunday. And look up for the next Sunday. I hope you learned something. And may God bless you. So let's close with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you, Lord. We thank you for this time you've given us to share the word of the Lord. And we thank you for everything and may you keep on blessing us and be with us through and forever. Amen. So kids, after this, don't forget to ask your mommy and daddy to print for you the crafts and do them, have fun, color and do everything. Bye and remember to sanitize and wash your hands and keep safe. See you next Sunday. Bye.